Hello, my name is Cliff Godwin and I'm responsible for eBusiness Suite development at Oracle. And today I wanted to give you an overview of our strategy and roadmap for eBusiness Suite. So what we want to do first is talk a little bit about the release roadmap overall, how eBusiness Suite fits into the broad portfolio of products we have at Oracle. Uh, talk a little bit about how we engage with customers to decide what to do in our new releases of eBusiness Suite, and then talk a little bit about how you can build your roadmap uh, to find value in the releases and the offerings we have within the eBusiness Suite product family. So starting off with a strategy overview, uh, we continue to build new versions of eBusiness Suite and release new uh, capabilities as part of our Apps Unlimited strategy. What that means is that we're continuing to invest in the products that our customers are already running, can you work on the enhancement requests that they have um, to, to adopt new modern user interface capabilities and to make the systems easier to own and operate. And we're doing that across our on-premise products like uh, eBusiness Suite and JD Edwards and PeopleSoft and Siebel. In particular with eBusiness Suite, we have come out with a number of releases in uh, recent uh, years. And the latest one we've come out with just recently is the 12.2.4 release, come out in uh, the summer of 2014. So uh, we'll talk more about what we're going to be doing going forward, but uh, this is the strategy that applies really to all our products. In particular, this is what we're doing with eBusiness Suite in this area. Now, the, uh, in a parallel with the investments we're making in the existing product lines, we are also building out the most complete set of cloud products for applications in the industry. So we have uh, ERP, uh, HCM and uh, consumer, uh, customer experience related applications all in the cloud. And we expect most customers to deploy what we call a hybrid model, meaning you're going to continue to operate your existing on-premise products and in addition uh, add to that capabilities that we've built in the new cloud uh, generation of the products. So uh, coexistence and a hybrid uh, approach is really the new normal in IT. So many people have moved to uh, cloud-based solutions for things like recruiting, for example, with our Taleo product, while continuing to run their uh, core ERP system uh, on-premise. So let's talk a little bit about the roadmap for eBusiness Suite as a whole. Uh, we are, we just came out, as I mentioned, with our 12.2.4 release. That was the latest update to a release that came out in September of 2013, the 12.2 release. Going forward, we will spend at least the next couple of years doing incremental updates to 12.2. So you'll see a 12.2.5, a 12.2.6. Beyond that, we may continue just doing a 12.2.7, or we may decide that that's the time to do a 12.3, which would be a release that you'd have to consume across all the product areas at the same time, uh, similar to 12.2. So uh, we haven't decided exactly when that will come, uh, but in the meantime, what we've been focused on is, is, or what we will be focused on, is adding the new capabilities that our customers ask for uh, without requiring a new major upgrade. So generally, we customers are not looking for us to do something, a new release that they have to upgrade to all at once. They'd like us to be releasing functionality in ways that is that are easy to consume. Uh, you can take that update in in one product area like uh, supply chain and not take it in another like financials. Uh, and we're focused on trying to produce these easy to consume updates that have new functionality but don't require full upgrades. And that'll be what we focus on for at least the next couple of years. Now, there's, that's kind of a normal path of evolution of eBusiness Suite. Now, uh, from one release to the next and doing incremental updates uh, on major releases before we do another one. What's new and kind of interesting about our roadmap is that in some areas we've been doing innovative work that will continue to apply to our 12.1 release as well as to our 12.2 release. So that's pretty unusual and for those of you who are on the 12.1 release or maybe arriving on it having upgraded from one of the earlier releases, uh, it's important to understand that if 12.2 upgrade isn't in your immediate future, that doesn't mean that you're just going to sit with the existing functionality you have with nothing new until you many years from now do that upgrade to 12.2. Instead, what it means is that there are several types of investment that we're making that particularly involved in improving the user interface that you can consume while you're still on 12.1. So that different aspect, that unusual aspect of the roadmap is what I want to make sure we, I, I convey clearly here. Now, 
we are organizing our investment activities into three major themes. One is improvements to the user experience. The second is uh, functional innovation. Third is operational efficiency. So in each of these areas, there'll be an additional presentation uh, that you can, you can access to see what we're doing in, in user experience or functional innovation uh, is a separate um, presentation in this series. The take home message though, without getting into a great deal of detail, about 12.2, the main thing to understand about 12.2 is that that's the release where we introduced online patching. What online patching means is that users can be on the system on the version they're running and you can apply patches to get the system updated uh, and users don't have to be offline while those patches are being applied. That can happen while users are still using the unpatched version and then when it's all ready to go and all the patches are in, you can then bring the system down and bring it back up again, basically bouncing it for about typically 20-30 minutes and that will be the user outage and after which they can connect to the patch system. So in terms of reducing planned maintenance downtimes, this is an enormous breakthrough. And for many customers who are in manufacturing businesses or service customer facing businesses or businesses with international operations where there are users all over the world and there's never a good time to have an outage, uh, this is a very important feature. So at a high level, how you think about 12.2 will significantly be determined by how important an improvement to the system availability is in your business context. If you have problems today organizing around the planned maintenance outages that you have around applying patches uh, or updates, uh, this feature will dramatically improve your situation and give you business value. If that isn't a problem today, if you haven't really noticed it, if you're comfortably handle outages over weekends and it doesn't really affect the business, then this feature will not be as important to you and going to 12.2 overall will probably not be as urgent for you. Now I'm often asked how do we decide what features we're going to put in new releases of eBusiness Suite and we've actually changed that. We're kind of in the process of rolling out a new paradigm for that which I wanted to make sure you're aware of. So we have a lot of different ways where we engage with customers to decide what to put into new releases. We have a, a uh, part of that process that is, involves a very few customers with very intense levels of engagement. For example, our customer advisory boards and strategy councils where customer people, customer personnel will fly to meetings and review design documents and basically have deliverables associated with our project to decide what to do in the next release. So in some cases, you may decide that that's a level of investment that makes sense for you to make in the products. But much more typically and much more broadly, users in any area of the products can have an idea about what they'd like to see in the system and without a huge investment of effort would like to just record that so that we can consider that and put that in a future release of the products. So the way that that has traditionally worked is by filing service requests. You basically uh, contact support either online or over the phone and explain what you'd like in the product and then that goes into a database and when we go to build new releases we look through all of those and see which kind of common ideas have been raised by a number of customers and we tend to, to focus on the ones that have been um, asked for by a number of people. But you as the customer don't have a lot of visibility into whether other customers are also asking for the same thing you asked for. Uh, and so it's not really, it's a very kind of siloed and, and isolated process the way it, that it's traditionally been. So what we've decided to do is move to a social networking model for deciding, uh, to, for getting enhancement feedback. So here we're opening, we're creating what we call support communities where you can introduce a, uh, you can see what other ideas have been proposed and see whether you want to add your voice to something that's already under discussion or whether you want to introduce a new thread of discussion with your own idea about how we can improve the products. And then your idea or your contribution will be reacted to and amplified on and by, by other customers and we are involved on the product management side and the support side and there'll also be a representative from the user groups uh, involved in these communities so that the discussions will head in a direction that is practical about some things that we you know could do in the product and really exactly what did you mean and exactly how did you want it to work so that when we build something it winds up being actually useful for a wide number of customers 
and we can have a good sense of the will of the customer base, if you will, by uh, having an open process where a lot of people can participate and, and essentially like other people's enhancement requests so we can get a sense of popularity uh, in an open forum like that. So we're moving to that model. We've already, pr we've already got this going in uh, procurement. So if you're interested in this, you can, you can join the procurement enhancement community and see what ideas have been surfaced that you might want to attach yourself to or, or if you'd like to introduce new ideas. And we'll be rolling this out in other areas of the products here over the coming months. So let me talk a little bit about how you can think about from different places you might be in your use of eBusiness Suite, how you can think about how to look for value in, in our uh, eBusiness Suite releases. So the first thing to understand is that if you're on one of the older releases, the 11i or the 12o release, you urgently need to be doing a project to upgrade to, uh, to either 12.1 or 12.2 of eBusiness Suite. If you are on that release and you haven't begun that project, uh, you haven't selected which one to go to, um, you know, you need to do that right away, and I'll talk in a moment about how the key issues that will decide that, to help you decide that. If you're, once you're on 12.1, uh, you'll be able to stay on 12.1 through the rest of the decade. So we're not really trying to get people to go to 12.1 and then hurry and do an upgrade to 12.2. Uh, we want people to sit and get value out of the release they've implemented rather than continue to be focused their investments on upgrades. Uh, so once you get to 12.1, you'll be supported there through uh, 2019, and of course 12.2 is the ongoing release that we're, uh, we're adding capability to now. It's our latest release. So either one of those as a target would, would be uh, a viable place to be through the rest of the 2010s decade. So in general, if you are in one of those earlier releases, as I mentioned earlier, the key consideration is going to be how much online patching uh, is of value to you. If it's of high value, you'll definitely want to go to the 12.2 release. Of course, the new features and functions in 12.2, if those appeal to you, you'll want to go to the 12.2 release because of the business value that creates. Uh, it is true that there are many, many more customers on the 12.1 release. The 12.2 release is still fairly new. For some, for some customers who are already begun their projects to go to 12.1, that remains perfectly valid as a release to target. And even some customers who are on older releases that are, who are um, you know, particularly risk averse or who just feel more comfortable being on a release where there's thousands of live sites uh, can still target the 12.1 release even today uh, for an upgrade, say, off of 11i or, or 12.0. Um, in general, we're seeing people target upgrades now at 12.2, but 12.1 uh, would still be a perfectly reasonable choice if, if that makes sense, uh, you know, given your, your particular situation. So in terms of thinking about how to get value out of the releases, what I often see is people doing starting with a technical upgrade. You may have already done this or be in the middle of it, but many times when people are upgrading from 11i in particular, but even from 12.0 up to 12.1 or 12.2 of eBusiness Suite, uh, they try to scope out as much as possible from that project. They try to keep the scope limited, the cost limited, the time limited, by saying let's not pick up all the things that involve a lot of business process change as part of our upgrade project. So a lot of people upgrade and wind up with a lot of the same customizations, a lot of the same business processes, a lot of the same feature capability level that they were really running on the prior release. So they're technically in a better support situation because they're on a release with a longer support life, but they really didn't take advantage of the new capabilities that are there. So the first thing to understand is at the 12.1 level, uh, there's a lot of new features we introduced and a lot of new products that we introduced that if you simply did a technical upgrade, you probably aren't taking advantage of. So my first piece of advice is if you have, if that is your history, if you got to 12.1 that way without taking advantage of a lot of new features or if you're still kind of in the process of finishing up your upgrade, uh, be sure to you know, after that upgrade's done, come back and get the value out of the release that you're on. Uh, oftentimes that doesn't involve necessarily any new implementation expense. Many times it's just business process change work to actually set up shared service operations or to uh, get people to get your purchasing buyers to start using the new buyer's work center. Things where it involves a change of the flows that people have in their jobs but the software is already there, so you might as well you know, use the capability and get value out of it. So basically, don't forget to come back and get the value out of some of the work that you might have left on the scope cut table back when you were scoping your upgrade. Come back and get it once you get there, 
in a subsequent project. Uh, in addition, implementing new projects, products at the 12-1 level can make sense because oftentimes these are adjacent to products you've already set up and are already running, so you've done 90 plus percent of the implementation work. So in an area like procurement, where you may be running procurement and iSupplier portal and iProcurement, but you're not running supplier lifecycle management, uh, that's a very easy adjacent product to configure at the 12-1 level because everything about purchasing is already set up. So your suppliers are already defined. This really just enables the business process of onboarding new suppliers and validating that they continue to have the right qualifications to do business with you and, and so forth. So it's really master data management around suppliers and, and the onboarding process for suppliers. But that's something you can add very easily with very little implementation work if you're already on 12.1 of purchasing. And we have analogous things like that in every area. So in the functional presentation, we'll talk a lot more about different opportunities that there might be to get leverage out of your investment in 12.1. Now the next layer of value you can look at is a set of user interface improvements or user uh, experience improvements that, that we have made that also apply to 12.1. So these didn't come directly with the upgrade. So if you just upgraded, particularly if you just did a technical upgrade, you aren't running these. But they are available to you to do on your 12.1 instance without actually upgrading to another release of eBusiness Suite. So these are the category of the EBS extensions for Indeca, which we have, which would describe in our user interface, uh, user experience presentation. Um, but those products give you essentially an information discovery based front end for most of the applications in the system that make it a lot more efficient for users to get to the work that's important for them to work on and may eliminate the need for you to build or maintain many operational reports that you have in the system today. So uh, that is an important thing to consider uh, as a way to both give the, uh, give the users interfaces that they will like better and improve their productivity and also cut the IT expense associated with a lot of operational reporting. And the other piece of user experience innovation that you can attach to 12.1 is our new set of smartphone applications. And these apply to both commonly used things across the business like approvals and expense entry but also to some line of business specific things like in making inquiries about product uh, order status or about product information, inventory balances and so forth. So those things are both the Indeca extensions and the smartphone applications are available to you to take advantage of while you're still on 12.1 and we'll be doing more of those, more Indeca extensions and more uh, smartphone applications even as we go forward and they'll still be applicable to 12.1. So if you're on 12.1, keep in touch with what we're doing uh, to add new capabilities because you may be able to get new 12.1 based capabilities even though 12.2 is already out. And the final aspect of this is that if you are on 12.1 and you're considering doing customizations or extensions to 12.1, you should consult the list of things we've done in 12.2 to see whether uh, before you invest in customizing or extending if you're doing something that matches one of the product capabilities we've already come out with at 12.2 maybe that at that point would be a reason to consider going to 12.2 instead or at least making sure that you model what you're doing as a customization or extension uh, on the same design that we've uh, used in building the 12.2 version of that so that when you do finally get to 12.2 you can retire your custom extension. So even if you're not planning to go to 12.2 for you know, several years, uh, there's value in tracking what we have in 12.2 because you'll understand you know, essentially at what point it will make sense to the business to, uh, to proceed with that. And that may be an evolving story as you build out customizations or as your needs for the use of the software uh, evolve over time. Now, besides the value that we've created with 12.1 features, user extension, user interface improvements with any business suite and 12.2 capabilities, the other place to look for value is in coexisting with our cloud solution. So whether you're on 12.1 or 12.2, we are working to make sure that eBusiness Suite integrates with the, uh, with the cloud offerings that we have that make sense as extensions to uh, what you have in eBusiness Suite. So in particular, 
Uh, there are some uh, new capabilities in financials around cloud revenue uh, management and around financial reporting that you should look at if you're running eBusiness Suite financials. There are new capabilities in the talent management area in human capital management in the cloud, which if you're running EBS uh, HR, you should take a look at and so forth. So in all the different areas where we have our cloud applications, we're looking for opportunities to integrate those back to any business suite core uh, customer so that you can get value out of the investments we're making in those areas as well. And then finally, not all of the investment we've made is in the cloud. We continue to have uh, things you can look at outside of eBusiness Suite to add value to your environment by moving to later versions of the middleware, uh, by adopting our engineered systems, by adopting edge applications like Agile or Demontra or uh, transportation planning, uh, Hyperion, GRC, and so forth. So there are many, as well as our BI applications. So there's many. Um, uses that you can make of other products that come from Oracle that integrate into your eBusiness Suite environment and support it to get value of our overall R&D investment, uh, some of which are in the cloud and some of which are other on-premise solutions or infrastructure uh, solutions that, that work with your eBusiness Suite environment itself. So with that, I hope that's been useful to understand how where we're going with eBusiness Suite, the areas we're focused on investing in, and where to look for value in the uh, capabilities that we've already released in the broad Oracle portfolio. Thanks for listening.